In the Crown Point High School Machine Shop, there are many projects that challenge students both intellectually and mechanically. Today, we are going to look at one of these projects. To the untrained eye, the Swiss cheese cube may look just like a block of steel that has a lot of holes drilled in it. In reality, it is a challenging project that insists upon a high degree of precision and accuracy in measurements. This project will take a student three to five weeks to finish properly. Let's take a brief look at how this seemingly impossible object is made. The cube first starts off as a raw piece of material. The machinist must then square the sawed edges. Next, it's onto the surface grinder. The surface grinder will provide an accurate size within five ten thousandths of an inch, which is about an eighth the thickness of a piece of standard copier paper, while giving a mirror-like finish. You can now see how the block has changed so far by looking at these examples that were taken before and after grinding. Now, the machine ascribes the lines forming a grid on three sides. The points where the lines intersect get center punched to mark the precise location of the holes. Now it's on to the drill press. This will rough most of the stock out of the holes. First, the machinist will drill the center holes in the three sides that he laid out. These holes will act as a guide for the first drill. The dark oil helps to cool and lubricate the cutting tool while increasing tool life. Several different drill bits are used. The block requires a series of progressively larger holes because the internal structure of the cube is constantly being thinned and weakened. After each cutting operation, it is up to the machinist to get rid of the sharp edges or burrs and make sure the work sides stay smooth and flat. When the block is all drilled, it is ready to go over to the milling machine for the final five boring and reaming operations, each one taking the block closer and closer to the breaking point. Because the block is so thin, the machinist must also be aware of how much pressure he puts on the vise that is holding the cube. Too much pressure, and he will crush the block and distort the holes. Too little pressure, and the block may come out of the machine. Now it's time for an operation called boring. Much like drilling, this will take out the small amounts of stock each time it is run through the hole. But unlike the drill, it will put the holes in an exact location. Now the boring bars are put into an eccentric boring head. This tool allows the machinist to adjust the boring bar location, which will adjust to the size of the hole. This operation will take the holes within three to five thousandths of an inch to the finished size. Finally, a reamer will take a small amount of stock out resulting in a smooth surface finish while maintaining an accurate size within five ten thousandths of an inch. When the reaming is all done, the machinist will have drilled, bored, and reamed the equivalent of 384 holes and the thickness between the holes is approximately 13 thousandths of an inch. That's about the same thickness of a business card. And that's how it's made.